everyone. Uh, good to be back with you again, and looking forward to this first of the uh, Alive Insights um, uh, series. Uh, so uh, I'd like to begin by kind of uh, explaining a little bit about how I, how I work in, in this mode. Um, for many years, I've been doing work uh, going to the light for corporations and think tanks and, and things like that, and retrieving uh, useful information, patentable information, testable information. Um, and um, the difference with me is that mine is a very natural process. Um, I don't have, I'm not a um, TV psychic or TV channeler, and uh, I don't have to close my eyes and use a uh, strange voice to impress people. It's, it's never been the way it's been with me. Uh, my, so my voice won't change, and I won't go into a strange alien accent or something. That, uh, that hasn't happened yet. Um, so, and also, when I'm working, um, well, when I'm, I'm working with the light, um, I'm very much a part of the process, fully conscious of it. And um, uh, in think tanks, I can work with my eyes open, still be with the light, draw pictures for uh, uh, scientists and, and people and, and engineers and things when I'm in these think tanks. So it's a very natural process for me. Uh, it's like uh, we're one, you know, we're all one, and we're one with the light. And uh, so, uh, so that's just a little preface on uh, don't expect any voice changes or any uh, strange, strange behavior <laughs> on that part. Um, I don't think the light needs to impress you that way. So, um, but um, now the what I what I've done for for this series is that. Um, I did mention that uh, this is not like a live psychic show, um, but I did get actually a fair number of questions that were of that genre. Um, uh, I, I don't know if I'm going to get to any of those today. What I did do, though, is I took all the um, emails that were sent in with questions, uh, had them turned upside down, didn't even look at them, and just uh, with the higher self kind of picked um, I picked one that would be the main subject of today, which actually turned out to be very cool, actually. And uh, and then uh, at, at, towards the end of this um, uh, session with you, I will um, I will uh, see what the light has to say about individuals, and, and um, we'll see where that goes. But basically. Um, this is not about a lot of personal, uh, very, very personal questions. That should be more of a private session. But uh, other than that, there were some very good questions. Um, but I let the light kind of pick uh, where we should go in this first one. And it picked, it picked one that I think is just incredible um, and may address uh, some of the uh, questions that were sent in. This is very interesting. Um, so give me a minute here to get synced up. And uh, we'll begin. Okay. Um, the subject for today, and we'll, uh, it's going to be fascinating, is the higher self concept, contacting the higher self, working with the higher self. What is the higher self? Uh, this is one of the most um, important uh, things that you can learn in this life or any life. Um, it is one of the most important things, more important than a college education, more important than wealth, more important than anything you might possess. Um, the only thing that comes in second to that is your health. Uh, it is the most important thing next to your health. Um, in, the, uh, in the traditional sense, the uh, higher, higher, higher self concept gets, um, there's, depending on, on where you're coming from and what, what level you're talking at, there, uh, this can be a little confusing to sort out the terms, and I know that's probably going to come up. So the terms work like this. The higher self concept, where what we're really talking about here is what some people call the oversoul, and, uh, and in this context, we're going to keep it to a very personal level. Um, so some, people, some people's uh, um, concept might be what you call an oversoul or a superconscious um, or a guardian angel. The, the, the uh, higher self or oversoul matrix quite often acts as guardian angel to us. Um, and uh, um, so uh, in this higher self concept, there's something very, very important to understand. There, the, there's only one really um, higher self for the whole planet, higher 
higher self matrix. It's the highest of the thoughts, ambitions, desires, prayers that have been generated on this planet from the beginning of, time, of the time of this planet. Um, and so uh, what has accumulated over eons of time is uh, great, great wisdom in the higher concepts. Now, in our realm and in our field, there is uh, nothing has been left out. There is the good, the bad, the ugly, and the uh, awesome, and the terrible. Uh, just like the rest of the universe, our thoughts, our prayers, and our desires are self-organizing, self-selecting, and self-correcting. So that means that what you have in the frequency band, and, and I'm just talking about this planet because I'll mention something else about other planets in, in a little bit. The, the important thing to understand is that we live on this planet now, and we're in this realm, and we're in this field, and that is the, where, where your feet are is where you should be. Uh, there are so many people that live uh, with their heads in the stars, and they, their feet are not on the ground. Um, and so that, we're concentrating on this realm, this field, and it's an incredible field to understand. There is a higher self network. There's one higher self for the planet, and that includes the humans. There's a, it gets back to this um, nebulous concept that's used quite often, which is oneness. We're all one. We really are. All of us are one. But you do have an individual over souls. Some people would call that the superconscious. Um, so there, there's this personal connection to the higher self network. And the higher self network works for all of us. Um, what people have misconceptions, though, about the higher self, uh, they think it's going to um, be on their side, fight for them, uh, make things the way they want them to be made. The higher self network is completely unbiased, and, but there are ways to work with it where you have a higher chance of manifesting what you want in your life, but it's completely unbiased. Um, uh, the higher self network will usually not step in, even if you're going to kill yourself. That's your choice, your path, your lesson. And so to think that there's some higher order of uh, beings that are in control or are going to control us and in some way influence us to uh, go whatever path that source thinks humanity should go uh, is uh, not natural. Uh, there's completely unbiased. But there, there, it is a, one of the greatest things you can learn is to work with this network. The, um, the oversouls or the higher self network, both the oversouls and the higher self network are like the internet. They're connected in that way. It's amazing. It's an incredible network of light. Uh, and the higher self network is all of the highest aspirations, uh, all the highest thoughts. All the other stuff is in other realms, um, and you're free to visit those realms uh, any time you like. There's nothing stopping anybody from visiting the darker realms where you have infinite shades of darkness from the, from the grays all the way down to the blackest black of things. So that, that is a realm in itself. The most regenerative realm is the, is the realm of the higher self. And this is, supersedes um, the evolution of humans on this planet. This, this system was evolving before humans evolved on this planet. Um, but we are fully equipped, we are fully equipped to interface with this um, higher self network. I'd like to explain a little bit here. The superconscious connection to the higher self is um, what we really need to do at this time in our evolution, in this time in our lives, actually, um, because we're uh, we're one of the largest populations this planet has ever known of consciousness. Imagine that one of the largest populations of consciousness that has ever existed on this planet exists now. Uh, many people will label that um, every level from incompetent to stupid to evil to saints and to geniuses. It's all here, and it's all important in its way. Um, what is very much important now at this time is to 
understand and relate to the earth, which is the most immediately relevant thing that we need to be in contact with and be aware of. In most past lives, uh, and in most cultures up to the very recent times, uh, getting in touch with yourself, getting to know yourself or the gnosis of the self has been taboo. And uh, uh, this is why this is not even taught in schools today, for the most part. <clears throat> getting to know ourselves is a very interesting and most important uh, process that we can learn to do on this planet. First, we're here to learn our lessons. How can we hope to be of any benefit to any other planets or go anywhere else or any other levels until we master this level first, the level we're at, the level where our feet touch the ground. The key to this is that you are a divine instrument. Humans are divinely perfect for channeling and contacting all of these energies. But the key phrase here is know thyself. Have you heard that phrase before? Know thyself. And what this means is that we must know our real self, not our imagined self, not our uh, legendary self. Uh, our real self is, is something very simple. In fact, remember that the best knowledge, the most wisest knowledge of all, is very simple. True wisdom. True universal wisdom, in fact, is very, very simple, not complicated. The phrase, know thyself, is very, very important. What that means in this connection to the Oversoul and the Higher Self Network is that we are fully equipped. We have, we have three brains. These brains have evolved over eons of time. The first brain has evolved from the first brain that ever evolved on this planet. It's, it's your first brain. It looks, uh, it's, uh, a, it's small, it's at the base of your brain. This brain has evolved from the very first brain and it's still operating. This is the very psychic part of yourself. True psychic ability is in all things, from bacteria to humans to plants. Even rocks have a form of psychic ability, of reacting with and interacting with everything around it in very interesting ways. Uh, this is what shamans have discovered in ancient times, that certain stones would raise vibrations, lower vibrations, heat you up, cool you down. Uh, this, is all a, this is all a form of consciousness interacting. The first brain is one of the most overlooked and disregarded brains, um, but it is where all of your psychic ability resides. The, the upper brain, which we'll talk about in a minute, has no psychic ability whatsoever. And I'll explain that as we go along. The first brain we evolved um, is psychic in this way. Psychic, what we call psychic ability in the human realm, evolved from day one. It's uh, consciousness reaching out to explore its surroundings, the world around it, in fact, the universe around it. And uh, this was first and foremost a survival mechanism to sense um, danger, food, water, and it's incredibly well adapted at that. Although modern humans uh, have let that brain kind of uh, atrophy a bit, uh, it is an incredible brain. Shamans use this brain quite a lot, shamans and the mystics, but uh, to talk to plants, to open up. This is the brain that talks to plants. Um, and so the first brain, which um, has been called the subconscious, and in modern times that uh, phrase has sort of gone out of, uh, uh, out of popularity, uh, it's referred to uh, in many circles now as level one, because the subconscious brain is not subconscious. It's fully conscious, absolutely fully conscious. It is the part of your triune brain that never sleeps. It is always fully conscious, and it never forgets anything and that we're not able to use this part of our brain uh, more is, is something that uh, has hindered us in the modern world quite a bit. Um, so, the, so I prefer not to call it the subconscious. It is level one. Level two, our second brain, is, the, is what we call the conscious brain. It is, um, it is the brain that lets us become uh, uh, more uh, organized. We, be, we are able to use this brain in many, many ways to advance our life, our survivability, and to interface with the world. Uh, that's level two of the conscious.
conscious brain. Then you have the third brain, which is the uh, level three, which is the super consciousness. That's the that's this upper brain that is just amazing. Um, many times uh, it's been referred to as the star child. Um, it is the most recent part of our evolution. Um, very, very recent, in fact. It's only been around seconds of time in, in evolution and in cosmic time. Uh, this third brain is the brain that will lead us to the stars and help us colonate, uh, colonize many star systems. It will help us heal ourselves. It will help us figure out things that um, uh, the ancients weren't even able to figure out. This brain is ready. It's fairly untapped at this point in evolution, uh, but there's plenty of room, plenty of brain for the future, and we're going to be needing this third brain for much more important things than just jobs or working a nine-to-five job or becoming a part of, a, of an industrial situation where you're just cranking out parts all the time or even, or even um, dealing with computers that much in the future. So we have um, three brains. It's very important to understand this part, this, this part of it, because so many people tend to jump off the supernatural cliff too fast and they, they don't even learn who they are or what they're about in these other dimensions. And these are these three brains are three dimensions right there. Um, there's an interesting phrase and for this talk I will use the uh, the phrase that um, I believe most of my listeners will, will will be able to relate to and that is there's something very important about getting these brains together and getting them working together and in unison. The most important thing you can do, and the sooner you do it, the better, is to learn to get level one and level two cooperating together in unison. And that brings up this phrase that uh, will be familiar to many of you. In the Christian Bible, there is a phrase that says, if any two of you knock in my name, ask in my name, it shall be delivered. And this is in many cultures, very similar statements in many, many cultures, certainly in shamanic thinking. Um, what this really means is that any two of you, that means if you can get level one and level two to agree and to be at peace and to work together, you stand a very high chance of manifesting the good things that you need and desire in your life. The problem with most people is that level one is always fighting with level two. And again, in the Christian Bibles, there, there's a story of Cain and Abel. Very important story that's highly overlooked. Um, this story is very important because the first child was Cain. And Cain is portrayed as uh, a hard worker working in the fields, didn't have a great mental uh, conception of the universe or anything, didn't even have a concept of uh, God, really. Along comes the second child, which is the second brain, Abel. Abel, who is brilliant, fair, um, has a concept of God, can speak to God. Everything's much easier, seemingly, for uh, Abel. The lesson of this story is an ancient and very, very important lesson that affects you every minute of your life. And that is this. If ever the mind thinks it can do without the body, it is a huge mistake. And there are many uh, philosophies, uh, religions, the Atlanteans, for one, the concept of the Atlanteans, all believe that the mind created the universe and the mind created everything. Uh, uh, a very arrogant uh, view of things in the, in the natural universe. So what happens if these two fight or become enemies? Almost every time, 99.9% .9 of the time, level one will win. It's like this. How many times have, I mean, have you heard the story where someone says, I'm going to hold my breath until I get what I want? Have you ever tried that? Or I'm going to hold my breath until I die? Have you ever tried that? It doesn't work, does it? At a certain point, you pass out and the body takes over. It, it overrides the mind. It's quite powerful, although for us in the modern ages, we think the mind is the most powerful thing. It is not. The body, the biology, the first brain is so powerful. 
level one. And so the story of Cain and Abel is a very important lesson to learn. Um, if there, and Cain was the, the dark one, Abel was the, the fair one, this is the reference to the ancient saying that there's, there's been a war between the, the uh, children of darkness and the children of light. That's been misconstrued by Christians and others as to what it really meant. Um, this is really the subconscious and the conscious mind trying to work together. The, conscious, the subconscious mind was here infinitely longer than the conscious mind, and both of them have been around a lot longer than what we now call the superconscious. So, uh, so you, you can get into this conflict where if these two are not communicating and these two have serious issues, you are going to have serious issues in your life. And the more that this battle between the sons of darkness and the sons of light goes on, the more it impacts your body, your health, and your abundance in life. So it's very, very important to get to know these two parts of your brain very carefully and to work with them. It's very important to get these two to agree on things because in the subconscious, which is very, very literal, level one is very, very literal, the things that you learned when you were very young in each life have stuck with you. And these lessons, and many of these lessons have not been great lessons. Many times when we're very young, and this is before we can actually process, and level two is up and running, um, and this is some say before the age of six, um, uh, the hard wiring is set in. And so if you were raised in a family that struggled for abundance and always thought rich people were bad and that rich people were never happy, that is wired into you. And it's wired into most of us, actually, because this has been a common thought among us commoners. Most of us are commoners on this planet. And, um, and so if this is hardwired in, then when you grow up and you mature a little bit and the level two starts going, wait, I, will, I think I can do better. I want to be wealthy. I want to be abundant. Um, and then everything you try doesn't seem to work. Are you beginning to see there's a connection there? There's something fighting against you. And it's not the world. It's not the universe. It's the Cain and Abel story all over again. And the great lesson of the Cain and Abel story is that if these two fight and, and become enemies, or if you don't listen to the subconscious, it will start disregarding you and will, will act as your enemy in many cases. Um, it's the one that can create voices in your head. It's the one that can bug you with guilt and terror and things like that. If it, if it, it doesn't come to peace, we've got to learn to raise our level one and level two in a more positive uh, atmosphere, especially from the, from the womb all the way through to probably the uh, puberty years. If, if you under, and there are cultures that understand this and their children turn out much, much better. There's a whole unified process here um, that helps pull all this together. So if the conscious and the subconscious are battling, and this is more common the case than not on this planet, actually, um, it's just that we've been taught to shut down our subconscious, shut down the animal part of ourselves. It's always been considered the animal part, our animal nature. Animal nature is not evil at all. It's just uh, Christian and other concepts have, have uh, tried to uh, instill this in us for eons now. So the story is that if you get into a real battle with level one, quite often level one's going to win almost every time. So the, the story of Cain and Abel is very interesting. Um, uh, Cain, uh, Abel didn't seem to help Cain much at all. People kind of miss this part about the story. Abel um, was you know, always being brilliant and, and you know, everybody loved him and all of that. And uh, the subconscious felt left out and no one was listening to him. And yet he was doing most of the work. The subconscious, the level one, that first brain does so much of the work of your life and your body. It's astounding. Um, and so what happened in that story is that Cain killed Abel. This is when your body turns on you. This is how it happens. Your body can turn on you. And you get into this battle, and it becomes like light or dark. Uh, this can easily be avoided and needs to be learned and can 
be worked out, uh, except in the most serious clinical situations, then you really do need professional help. And good news there, at this time on planet Earth, there are more healers, therapists, and modalities of, of self-correction and assimilation than have ever existed on the planet before. In fact, all that's happening for a very good reason. Because of the toxic past and the toxic families that we've been raised with, based in survival, based in wars, based in all these things, the, 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 we're in a phase now where we're in the beginning, the detoxification of the human psyche. And as many of you know that have tried to fast, it's like going through a fast and detoxing is what's happening on the planet right now. You're seeing a lot of detoxing and a lot of it is not pretty to look at or be a part of. Um, this toxification threatens so many people. Um, for those of you that have fasted before, as I have, uh, maybe you remember your very first fast when about the third day you think you're going to die. It's very, it's very scary, serious stuff. And just think about people that aren't nearly as into this stuff as, um, as, as we are on this call, for, for the most part. So, uh, so imagine how scary it is for someone that's um, going through this detox, not understanding what's going on, and uh, uh, all of this toxic stuff is oozing out of us. And uh, it, it's, it's so scary for most people. But once, once you understand the process, you know, it's like you're doing your, 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 your five-day, seven-day fast. On the, on the third day, you, it's just terrible. You just feel the worst you've ever felt, and you're, you have anxiety. All kinds of stuff can come up because it also affects the brain. And the brain has to detox in this process. Well, this is what the human race is going through right now. We are going through the detoxification of the human psyche. And a lot of it is not pretty to look at and, and see. Many people are reaching what they, what is metaphorically the third day. And many people are highly threatened right now. If you know people like this, try to comfort them and help them if you can. Um, they will get through this because by the fifth or seventh day, it turns around, there's a new energy, a clearness of thinking that you haven't had before. And uh, we should all, it's a, it's a uh, in many ways, the universe is quite toxic. Most of the things in the universe are very toxic to us, from radiation to uh, heat to solar burst, you name it. Uh, uh, just being in outer space is a very toxic event, actually. So it's a very toxic universe. and. Um, and uh, that extends down to our planet here. There, we, we pick up things in our lives and our thoughts and our hearts and our bodies that we need to detox. We've not been taught this. We need to learn how to detox on a regular basis, mentally, physically, and spiritually, without suffering. Um, I can tell you this, that the human body does not enjoy being tortured, even if it's for spiritual purposes. Forgive me for saying this, but sun dances and sweats that are too hot and, and those kind of dramatic things, the body doesn't like at all. Level one does not like that. But uh, many people force their body through these things and think they're getting high. Well, they're hallucinating out of pain, of course, and, and out of uh, dehydration and those sort of things. You can detox without torturing the body. Uh, and, and uh, in those dramatic ways, you know, you, you see people whipping themselves on certain religious holidays. The, the level one doesn't like this at all, and they may not like you for doing this to level one. You see, let's see how this can this can happen. So, it's very very important to understand your level one and get your level one and your level two communicating. This is not that difficult at all. Um, one way that is simple for a lot of people is to use uh, dowsing, say your pendulum. Learn to use a pendulum. It's a very important instrument. Again, keep it simple. You don't need $10,000 of electronic equipment to do this. A pendulum works just fine. Uh, the problem with uh, people using pendulums is this, is that they think they're cheating. They think they're moving their hand. And I've uh, seen people literally duct tape their arms and things to chairs and, and the table so nothing moves. That is not the way to do it. The pendulum connects you to your autotomic nervous system directly to that first brain. It's an incredible instrument. It direct, 
through your muscles directly into that first brain. Your hand is supposed to twitch. Your hand is supposed to move. Uh, you're not supposed to think about it uh, in, a, in, a, in, a, in a second level method. Let it happen. Um, it's the people that, oh, my hand twitched, I'm moving it. That is what the subconscious, the level one, is sending back through these muscles. So uh, it's very easy to look this up, learn how to douse. Uh, you formulate simple questions with the yes or no's. You can count. There's all sorts of things. This is the best and easiest way to get to level one directly without uh, psychic mediums or anything in the middle happening. And so what you do is you work out your issues consciously and with the subconscious. Level one, level two get together as brothers and sisters. Um, first of all, it's very important for level two to listen to level one, which it usually doesn't do, except for uh, maybe this audience is a little more enlightened than a lot of people out there who really don't listen to their subconscious. In fact, we've been taught not to pay attention to the animal part of ourselves, to that part of ourselves in many ways, and it's been taboo in, in many, many uh, cultures and over many, many uh, uh, eons of time. The important thing is, is to put down and keep the answers in simple yes or no questions because the question is just as important as the answer if you want good, correct information. To work out your issues between level one and level two, you should start out with health, abundance, uh, these subject areas, uh, fear, chronic unresolved issues. Write them down because there's something magical about writing them down with your hand, not a computer. You can do that later if you want to get nice and neat about it. Use your hands, use your body to, to uh, explore this part of yourself. And so what you, would, what you would do then is learn to listen to level one through a pendulum. And for those, for those of you that are clairaudient and super sensitive and all that, it, it, you know, there are many ways that my subconscious uh, directly speaks to me and I listen. I've learned to do this, but I did start off with a pendulum originally. Uh, and I still use pendulums. I carry them with me everywhere I go. Um, so, uh, so you write down abundance. What does abundance mean to level one? And you go down the list. Does, is this good? Yes or no? Do are, are rich people sad and unhappy? Is wealth bad? Those kind of simple questions and get a yes or no. Do not judge level one. Never judge level one, um, or, you'll, or it'll stop cooperating with you. Never force this. Never, never force this. If you get tired of it or you think it isn't working, just stop and take a break. Never try to force this kind of communication. This is very important to understand. Take a break and get back to it. So many people, especially in these days, are used to instant gratification. Uh, they're in, they're, uh, they're impatient. Uh, they can be hard-headed. Uh, depending on how hard-headed you are, it may take you a little longer than other people to get this information. And also, you really have to write down, are we in conflict? And ask your level one, are we in conflict? And have a list of things. Are we in contact? Are we in, are we in conflict about this? Are we in conflict about that? Put on that list some of the things that you've, you've consciously been trying to manifest and aren't happening, or you know, it just isn't happening for you. What's, what's blocking that? You might be surprised that without the cooperation of level one, it's very hard to manifest. Um, the, what happens in the world when you're not manifesting with the triune brain? You're using force of will, which is very different than, than what I'm talking about. Force of will means you get an army together and you go attack people and you make them do what you want to do. Or you start a cult and you brainwash them to do what you want to do. That is force of will. This is not what we're talking about here. Listen to the oldest, wisest part of yourself, level one. Um, um, some people have called level one an animal. Well, we are animals. And this is a beautiful animal. Most precious animal. Precious. It that way and be patient um, if 
if you're someone that doesn't uh, spend a lot of time on anything, well, it may take you a little longer to do than others, but it, it does happen, it does work. A pendulum is the, is the perfect tool to start with. So you make a simple list, you go down it. Are we, do we have any conflicts? Is it about our ideas about money? Is it about marriage, relationship? Is it about children? Is it about this? Make these simple questions and douse it. Um, and and um, you already have the equipment to do this work and this exploration because you are already with this triune brain and product of everything the universe has ever been. You are a divine instrument. Think of that. The other thing that usually um, um, interferes with this is self-doubt. So many people believe they're making it up. Well, there's, there's, a, there's a trick to this. This is not magic. This is the nature of the higher and lower self. This is the magic of, uh, this is the nature, not the magic. There's no magic here. This is the nature of level one and level two. Uh, when they can work together, this is le a level one, a level two energy. These are energy forms. Um, so the, the simple thing is to not always talk yourself out of it. And this is what takes some practice. When the right answer comes through, it will be instant. It will be the first thing that comes through. Do not ever second guess it. There are so many people that will go from one psychic to the next, from one friend to the next, until their friend, until they finally find one that tells them what they want to hear. That's not how you work with this method with our, our level one and our level two. If you're starting to do that, level one will just stop engaging with you. It's not stupid. It's very wise, actually. It, it knows that you're trying to get an answer. It gave you an answer, and you're not listening. You're not listening. So why should I play with you anymore? Um, and so um, it is very, very important not to second-guess yourself and to practice listening for that. That first answer will come through sometimes at the speed of light. Bang. You'll have to stop a minute and, and, and don't think about it. Let the answer settle in. Let it settle in. Don't second-guess it. Don't put words in level one's mouth, so to speak. Very, very important. You need to do this work. This is the most valuable work that you can do at this time. Um, if you haven't done it already, you need to be doing it. This needs to be taught to our children. Um, and it also can become a lot of fun. Now, for people that have um, these battles going on between the uh, subconscious and, and the conscious or level one and level two, you have to make peace. Learn to make peace with yourself, your past, your mistakes, your betrayals. Um, quite often, things that have happened to you, no matter who did them to you, it really wasn't about you anyway. It was about them, their issues. It wasn't about you. But we tend to take all this so personal, especially you know if it hurt you. Uh, that is uh, that is a mistake. Look at things as the somebody hurt me because they have issues. Maybe I hurt someone because I had issues, and start healing it there first. Now, once you've done this, once you've got a basic understanding, because if you're trying to manifest money, then you better understand what level one thinks about money, and you can convince. Now, everything's changeable. You know That's why this communication needs to be uh, loving, it needs to be supportive, and you need to listen to what's being said. Now, if level one believes the old standby that's in program in so many of us that rich people aren't happy, rich people are bad people, rich people have uh, stupid children, uh, look how much fun is made of the uh, British royal family, um, all the idiots, you know, that's, it's all they talk about over there when the, in the, with the comedians is the royal family and uh, their idiot children. Um, you know, um, basically, if you're going to work this out, you can, the level one is very easy to communicate with once it knows you're listening and once it knows it can trust you. Because if you're not listening to it, or, or in many cases it's trying to save your life by you know, giving you these sign signals, even voices in your head about certain things, um, once it understands that you are listening, it really does open up. And you can then rationalize, because much of the information about 
these issues in our life, abundance, whatever, were uh, we picked up at a, at a time before level two was fully developed. So these are unrationalized thoughts that have gotten stored in the hard wiring. You level two can go back and communicate and explain why abundance is not bad. Literally, you can change belief systems within level one and level two. Uh, first of all, level two's got to realize that level one is very important, <laughs> a very important player here. So, uh, so you, once you identify the issues, then you go back and, uh, like on the issue of wealth or abundance, you, you, you just rationalize that was something that we learned when we were very young. But the truth is in the world that uh, most rich people are not bad. Most rich people do not have idiot children. Most, pe most rich people are, in fact, happy. Uh, it's true. And, um, uh, and you can be, too. And you need level one. You need to enlist level one's help um, in a very loving way to be a part of the team. Very, and this is the most important stuff. If this work isn't done, uh, then you're going to have trouble on every other level. Um, and that means this. If level one, and it goes back to that saying, if any two of you ask in my name, it shall be done. Well, if, if the higher self network and the oversouls help you manifest everything you ever wanted to manifest, this would be a crazy chaos world. If everybody got every little uh, wish they wanted, it would be a very chaotic world. Um, and there are some built-in factors into the universal energy and universal um, mechanics, universal universal, it's just universal, that um, if you are not consistent, if something is not consistent, it doesn't work very well. You know, a drop of water on a stone doesn't bother the stone, but a drop of water on the stone for a thousand years ch can change the stone completely. The universe pays attention to consistency only. How many of us? literally go to bed wanting one thing and wake up the next day wanting something else. It doesn't matter how much you pray. These prayers will be ineffective. The, the uh, level three, the superconscious, does not pay attention to anything but consistency. Until you can be consistent, level three is, is right there for you, you know, ready to help at any time. But if level one and level two are not in unison, and that's where the power starts forming. Level one and level two working together um, is amazing. And if you're consistent, very consistent, which doesn't, uh, which doesn't take a lot of effort, by the way, although it's very difficult in this modern age with computers and everything to kind of stick on one thing for very long. I mean, we're, uh, we're all becoming adult uh, attention deficit. There is something that um, I can teach you that um, the light has taught me. It's called the 30-second meditation. This is an exercise that will maybe blow most of your minds. Um, we are so attention deficit nowadays that just holding one thought for 30 seconds might seem impossible at first. Um, just, just try that sometime. Hold one thought for 30 seconds and see how much practice that takes. I do this exercise three times a day, and I turned it into a prayer. Um, now, you know how the monks have beads, and they count their prayers, and the Catholics have rosaries, and they, they count their uh, beads. That helps keep you um, in sync. I, I came up with a, um, a, a bead set that I made. I just got the beads at the bead store. And there are uh, 30 beads on it, and one then there's 31. The, the, there's one large bead because I don't want to be, you don't want to be counting because then you're not meditating. I work my beads and I start at the big bead and when I come around to the, to the uh, big bead again, I know I've done 30 and I've done 30 seconds. And this, as for some of you, as for me, took, took some doing, but I've gotten very good at it. So we're talking 30 seconds, not hours of meditation. And one of the things that I do for 30 seconds is this. I, I say it once a second, once every bead. I say, I am love, I am health, I am wealth, and I am wisdom. I am very consistent with those thoughts. The more 
consistent you are with a core set of thoughts that become so ingrained in your mind, the more the, the universe is willing to pay attention to you. Um, the universe is very, very uh, uh, conservative in this way. It just won't do anything you ask. Have you noticed that? The universe just doesn't do anything that you ask it to do. But if you're consistent, the, the higher self network will start paying attention to you. This is why most, forgive me for saying this, most prayers for abundance and most prayers for these type of things don't really work. The prayers to help other people and to bless other people go right through the higher self network. They love it. But if you want, if, you, if, if you're wanting material objects and you're wanting uh, power and you're wanting all this sort of thing, well, you better be very, very consistent and it better be on a very positive note because thank goodness the predominant energy in the universe is actually very positive and so uh, it, it quite outweighs all negative energy uh, and that's why if you generate negative energy it automatically is separated by this self-selecting self-organizing universe all negative energy goes all to that side of the spectrum all positive energy goes it's to this side of the uh, spectrum it's like birds of a feather flock together same thing with your thoughts and prayers and your actions and your emotions very important to pay attention to this. So um, just try practicing, and you can use the um, stopwatch on your phone or whatever, or make yourself a set of beads. Um, the 30-second meditation is not as easy as you think in the beginning, but then once you get it, it becomes very, very powerful. It's just 30 seconds, it's, it's astounding. Try it sometime. Now, let's get a little more specific. How do I establish contact? with the higher self network, the over soul. How do I establish that? Well, again, you've got to keep it very, very seek, uh, simple. Very, very simple. Very simple. Um, and this is, um, this is a technique that's known by the ancients. It's a great technique for you to learn. It's called breathing. I think most of you can breathe. Um, but you can use breathing for power, breathing to open the gates to the higher self network. And this is how it works. Learn to breathe and, and hyperventilate. That's, um, for you, uh, for those of you who don't, don't understand what hyperventilate is, hyperventilate means um, you sit there and you take 10 deep breaths as deep as you can uh, and, and you, don't, you don't hold it, you, you do it rather quickly. You take you take it 10 deep breaths or more and you'll start getting dizzy. How many of you have ever done that? Well, what you might not know is that when you hyperventilate, uh, you're bringing in a lot of electrons into the body and you're literally, this can be measured uh, literally with electronic devices. The average human operates on 100 watts of energy a day. Isn't that amazing? Your entire body, your thoughts and everything operate on about 100 watts of energy electricity. Hyperventilating has been tested to raise that up to maybe 5,000 volts. Interesting, isn't it? So, if you want higher consciousness, then you've got to use higher energy to get there. Fossil fuels won't get you there. The old style of meditations and things are not power meditations to open up. You have to have a certain level of energy to get the higher self network's attention. And here's how it works. It's very, very easy. Um, you build a surcharge in your body by hyperventilating. And it may take some practice. And you'll, uh, you'll hyperventilate. For some of you, it may take 10 breaths. For others, it may take more. It just depends. But here's the sign to look for. When you're hyperventilating to build a surcharge to contact the higher self, Hyperventilate until uh, there comes a moment you get a little lightheaded, of course. You may, even, you may even feel like you're surrounded by light. Beethoven did this and felt like clouds of light were around him when he wrote. Um, you hyperventilate until you get a little bit dizzy and you feel the hair on the back of your neck kind of tingle. When you feel that tingle on the back of your neck, you have just opened the gate to the higher self. You have to know how to open the gate. Um, you know, uh, it's not like uh, the higher self network or Jesus or anybody or diaper changers. They're not here, you know, to change our diapers and, and teach us these things. These are things that we can teach each other. And this is how it works. So you have to give the energy. You have to build the energy. You are the instrument of all of this. You're the midpoint of all of this. You are what makes it happen. And so when the... so. If you're doing this to, um, uh, there's several, several ways you can do this. 
what, if you're doing this for healing uh, or manifestation, then and, and for any of this, you can write it down first and write it down with your hand. Write it down first what you want because the way the higher self network thinks and uh, works and the way your brain works is not in multitasking at all. In fact, there's no evidence anybody can multitask, actually. The brain does one thing at a time. But what the brain likes is what's called thought form clusters. And the old symbol for these were um, a, a clump of grapes. Put together a thought form cluster. Not too complicated again. Keep it simple. Put a thought form cluster together. Health, wealth, wisdom, whatever. Uh, focus on any one of those. Focus on an individual. Uh, have it down. And if you're focusing on individuals, it's really incredible once you open the gates to have their photograph with you. If you're trying to heal them, have a photograph of when they were their healthiest. This is also in the field of radionics. It's quite powerful. Uh, this is a part of radionics. So, uh, so you have this ready. You do your deep breathing. You feel the tingle. The gates open. And this may take a little practice, but it it's also uh, feels really good. Uh, the gate opens, and that's when you present your thought form to the higher self. And a good, a good way to imagine this is that um, as you raise the energy of your body, it's like a fountain of light rising. And then when the, when the tingle in the back of the neck happens, you get a little dizzy, the gate opens, and it's like this fountain of light comes right out of the top of your head and sprinkles back down. And at the top of that fountain of light is the, is the oversoul, the connection to the higher self network. Um, it's open, it's ready, it's saying present something. You've knocked, what do you want to receive? And um, uh, don't do it with fear, don't do it uh, in anything like that. Do it in calmness, clarity, um, and be consistent. You'll have to do it more than once for most of us, um, depending on, again, how hard-headed you are or how uh, attention deficit you are and all those kind of things may come in, but keep it going, be consistent. When that gate is open, present your thought form cluster, present your prayer, present uh, what you want to have manifested. Um, so this is um, uh, when things can really happen. And you see you, see you giving the energy, because it's a two-way thing, you give the energy for the manifestation the higher self and the over soul, they pick it up and they go, okay, it's all in agreement. Level one, level two agrees on this. Uh, uh, also, you can't put anything up there that's going to hurt anybody. No revenge or anything like that. The, uh, the over souls, they watch out after this stuff and they're not going to cooperate in it with you. Um, they're not going to get rid of a rival for you. It doesn't work that way. Uh, you have to do that on your own. But um, So when this is open and the what you might call the over soul or the higher self is is they're getting it and they're raining back down the blessings on you, the manna, whatever you want to call it, come back. And just bathe yourself in this fountain of light and release your thought form cluster. That's all you have to do is have it clearly written down, understandable, you've worked it out with level one, and just release it. You only have to release it once. You don't have to sit there for hours. Release it once, then bathe in the, in the shower, the fountain of light that's happening. Um, and don't try to second guess any of this. Just let it happen and come down. Now, that really does work very, very well once you start practicing it. And here's a number of ways that it can work very well for you. Um, most of us pray because we want something. Or we want, uh, we want to do something. Or we want something to happen. It's very good to do this, and I do it at least once a day, to raise this energy get the gate open, and just present the pure energy that I have raised as an offering to the higher self network. Because this is also an energy system. And if you can increase that energy system, the blessings on the planet and the peace on the planet that we're looking for will happen. The problem is that most people on the planet don't know how it works at this other level, at the etheric level. Um, and you've heard that thing, if, if there's 1% of people in town in a city that meditate, the city changes. Well, it's a little iffy, but, but it is, there's a kernel of truth there. The more of us that do this, the better. So at least once a day, I just generate the energy, get the fountain going, and just present the energy to the oversoul, the higher self network, and say, you guys know what to do with this. It's just an offering without 
any expectations whatsoever to feed the whole higher self over soul network. Um, and uh, and then other people, uh, this rains down on other people around the planet. It also builds the grid around the planet. We need to help energize the grid. Um, it's going to take more than crystals. It's going to take your life, your mana that you generate to do this. And thank goodness it's not hard to do. The other thing you can do is um, when you're, uh, it's, it's very important to understand that when you are using this kind of energy, uh, you have to be very, very clear, very simple. Keep it clear and simple. It's, you have to make good, effective sense if you're going to get the oversoul and the, the higher networks to work with you. Um, and so that uh, the other thing I would advise is that you get a circle together of people, because this works well in circles too, amplification of the energy. We should do it individually, of course, and we should also do it as, as groups. Smaller groups are better. Uh, Twelve or less are actually better energy groups than uh, tens of thousands of people. I mean, that, uh, those events happen and are wonderful, but it's a lot of scattered energy, actually, because hardly anybody's focused. Um, and so the other thing you can do, and this may sound funny to some of you, but this etheric plane, where all this is going on is quite useful also in a very practical sense. Um, you're not, if you use this energy not to manipulate people, uh, not to try to control anybody, because it will not help you do that at all, but here's what you can do, and I've done this many times. I call it advertising on the etheric plane. If I have an idea that I want to manifest, I do the whole energy, I send it to the oversoul, and I say, put this out over the network. And because at any given moment on planet Earth, there's someone somewhere that's open to your idea, open to your thoughts. There's simpatico with you. It's the same thing that, and I don't have to do this whole uh, energy thing uh, to find parking places, but it's the same idea. I, I had great luck calling my parking angels, and I've done this around the world the energy to find a parking place. What it is is that in any given moment, people are coming and going. And by you putting out the signal, uh, there's someone sitting there going, oh, I'm ready to go, let's go. You're not controlling them. They are ready to go. And uh, this really does work. Another way that I've used this is um, if I'm going to have an important meeting, um, I, I present this energy to the higher self network. And I send it out, I call it advertising on the etheric plane. And I imagine myself meeting this person, uh, having a good interview, having a good meeting, and uh, all positive. If I get any sign from the Oversoul Network, I shouldn't even be doing this, well then I stop. I pay attention to the Oversoul Network. So, and, and this is manifested in some interesting ways. I've been to many meetings in my life where I walk in the room, and uh, the person who I'm interviewing with or having a meeting with literally says to me as they're shaking my hand, have we met before? Do I know you? Interesting, isn't it? I've, I've done inventions at trade shows where I put this out over the uh, theory network for people that would be attracted to this type of thing. They will find my booth, not controlling anybody. And I've literally had, I've literally had shows where the product had never been introduced before, ever. No one's seen it. It's the first show, and I've had people come up to the booth going, oh yeah, where did I see that? Are you in magazines? It's fascinating how we can all cooperate on these levels. Very, very, uh, very good stuff. And groups, a group circle uh, that does uh, this work for the oversold, or the, I call it the planet work. You breathe, you hold hands, you create a vortex of light energy. Think about all these fountains going off together in unison. But you work it out ahead of time. What are we going to try to manifest today or this evening? Um, and look, look at the, uh, make sure that the people in your circle have done the work with level one and level two. Um, just remember that not everybody's perfect for every circle. And so the energy has to be right to create these vortex. You can do distant healings. There's so many things you can do, help people sell houses. It's amazing how this works if you're working in unison. That's why smaller groups work 
better because it's easier to get a smaller group of people together on one thing than it is uh, hundreds and thousands of people or a stadium full of people as some of these teachers try to do. Um, and so um, remember this key thing about groups and circles. Birds of a feather flock together. Water seeks its own level. You are known by the company that you keep. Just remember that really off energy, parasitic energy, can ruin a circle and shut down the higher self-contact. So you've just got to keep your circles clean. That's all. And, and uh, parasitic energy is not negative. I mean, it's not evil or bad or anything. It's just that uh, people with low energy seek energy. Uh, low energy seeks higher energy. It's just one of those energy things. And you need to be the master of that, of the circle. So it's very important if you're putting a circle together to get everybody to be simpatico and, and to verbally agree on everything that you're going to work on because it can be infinitely more powerful that way. Um, and so um, the, 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 the higher self network does not let in any low vibration energy at all. It cannot cross the gate. It's, it's a completely different vibration. You see how that works, self-organizing, birds of a feather? You, you, can't, you can't get this energy into that network. Because here's what happens. And, and a great example of this is ultraviolet light. And in, in our modern world, we use ultraviolet light to purify and to clean. Um, bacteria, germs, anything that's put in uh, of lower energy forms that are put into a higher energy form are disintegrated. It's the same thing with the Oversoul Network. If you try to put anything through that's not of that level, it's disintegrated. It just vaporizes. It doesn't go anywhere. It doesn't do anything. Um, and so this is a great um, safety mechanism that's built in. It's amazing. You cannot taint, pollute, or corrupt the Oversoul Network. It's totally incorruptible. Um, it's that simple. It's not magical. It's very simple, very simple reality. So um, it's very important to understand these things. And um, I'm going to wrap up here in a couple of minutes, but this is some very important stuff that we've, we've just gone through today. Very simple. Uh, I will be glad to go over it again with people if they want to. Certainly, uh, when we edit the tapes, it, it uh, will make it even more clearer. A simple process um, uh, to uh, work with level one, level two, because if level one and level two aren't don't have it together, if they're not simpatico, level three doesn't cooperate. It just doesn't happen. And so I uh, just think if we could get more and more people on the planet to understand this and more and more people in a younger and younger ages to um, clear out this uh, or re reevaluate this hardwired stuff because so much of our decisions and our emotions are hardwired before even six years old. And but that can be rewired, changed, charges, negative charges can be changed to positive charges. And you can change your life dramatically. And this is very important for people, uh, and I was one of them, that uh, I, I wanted success. I wanted all the good stuff, but I never could quite manifest it. I, I couldn't figure out what's the problem. Well, the problem was level one, level two weren't agreeing on this. I had some serious programs in level one about the world and about people, as you know, many of you know, that even gave me brain cancer. Talk about Cain and Abel. Um, and so um, I've lived this, and I know it works, and um, I'll be glad uh, to even go over it in even more detail um, at some other point if, if people like that. But it's very important stuff, level one, level two, if you're going to change your life and actually change the world, because once we start pumping this energy into the etheric on a consistent daily basis, then you're going to see the world change faster and faster. It's not going to change because people all over the world putting crystals and, and ley lines and grids. That's, I mean, that's fun. But that's not what's going to change the world. What's going to change the world is your divine energy. And we all have it. We can all generate it. And we can help others learn how to. And so um, I'm going to leave you with that right now. I'm going to tune in for a couple of minutes to see if there's anything else um, that um, is going to come through. So give me just a second <clears throat> to tune in. Um, there's someone 
listening whose name is Roman. And the light says, there's a trip coming up to Madison, Wisconsin. Uh, Madison, I'm getting, I think it's Wisconsin, Madison. Um, on this trip, you will be taking someone with you that you have not expected to take on this trip. This is going to change your life. There's, someone's going to take this trip with you. Someone that you don't know very well. This is a new vibration for you. This will be a good thing for you. Be open to that. Someone's going to want to go with you. There's also someone named John C. I'm getting John C. you need a new pair of shoes. Your knees are bothering, your back's bothering you. You need a new pair of shoes. You're very bad with your shoes. Your shoes are too old. You need new shoes. Let me tune in again. Mary Jo, you are on the right path. Your path is coming up to a fork, though, and uh, both are good. Neither one of these are bad. You will have to make a choice within, within the next 90 days. You're going to have to make a choice, probably something about moving, um, and that is, so the, the fork is stay or move. Um, this is a very, this is why you should go to your higher self network. Uh, neither one is, is bad, um, but uh, one of them will open your life to a completely new vista. This is coming up. Contact your higher self. And Cynthia, Uh, 